Hi, a very good evening viewers. You are watching Sunset TV and this is the news with me, Rashika. We get you today's top national and international news. Let's begin the bulletin with today's headlines. Cabinet approves development scheme for North East to give boost to infrastructure, industries and employment. Announces 78 days bonus to railway workers. Cabinet OK's development of container terminal at Deendayal Port in Gujarat. Upcoming budget will strike a balance between growth needs and the inflationary pressures, says Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. Rain disrupts life in Assam, Sikkim and North Bengal. Alert in Arunachal Pradesh. And Vice President and Lok Sabha Speaker attended closing ceremony of 36 national games in Surat, Gujarat. Army tops medals tally. Now, a quick look at some more important news of the day. Government to extend one-time grant of Rs 22,000 crore to three state-owned fuel retailers for losses in selling LPG below cost in the last two years. Agnivir Vayu 2023 recruitment to begin from November first week. Online examination in mid-January. Sports Minister Anurag Singh Thakur launches WADA Athlete Biological Passport Symposium. India has taken many steps for low-carbon development, hydrogen fuel and biofuels, as Earth Union Minister Hardeep Singh Puri. Singapore and United Arab Emirates expressing interest in rupee, says Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. INS Tarkash reaches South Africa for 7th edition of India-Brazil-South Africa Maritime Exercise. AIMS developing AI-enabled device, corposcope to detect cervical cancer in women. Union Minister Smriti Irani praises contribution of health workers, especially Anganwadi workers and ASHA workers during pandemic. India to focus on strengthening multilateral institutions during year-long G20 presidency, says Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman. Haryana stops drug production at plant making cough syrups flagged by WHO. Now news in detail. Several key decisions were taken in a meeting of the Union Cabinet chaired by Prime Minister Narendra Modi today. The government has approved a 6600 crore scheme for development in the North East. Prime Minister's Development Initiative for North East Region, PM Divine, will support infrastructure, industries and other livelihood projects in the North Eastern states. It will also support social development projects and create employment for youth and women. The new scheme is to be implemented during the year 2022 to 2025-26. PM Divine is a 100% central government funded plan and will be administered by the Ministry of Development of North Eastern Region. PM Divine ke jo mool udeshya hai wo PM Gati Shakti ki bhavna ke anurup infrastructure fund karna purvotar ki jurutho ke aadhar par samajik vikas pariyojanao ka samarthan karna युवाओं और महिलाओं के लिए आजीविकाओं की गतिविधियों को सक्षम करना और विभिन्न क्षेत्रों में डेवलपमेंट गैप्स को भरने का काम भी करेंगे इसकी 500 करोड़ तक की लिमिट रहेगी सोशल डेवलपमेंट के काम आएगा लाइवलीहुड के काम आएगा द यूनियन कैबिनेट हैज अप्रूव्ड अ प्रपोजल टू डेवलप अ कंटेनर टर्मिनल एट द टूना टेकरा दीनदयाल पोर्ट इन गुजरात द प्रोजेक्ट विल बी डेवलप्ड अंडर द पब्लिक प्राइवेट पार्टनरशिप मोड the estimated cost of rupees 4243.64 crore will be on part of the concessionaire common user facilities of rupees 296.20 crore will be on the part of the concessioning authority the indial port is one of the 12 major ports in india and is located on the west coast in the gulf of kutch in gujarat the project is proposed to be developed on bot built operate transfer basis by a private developer
एक बड़ा निर्णय लिया गया है ताकि पीपीपी मोड के अंतर्गत बिल्ड ऑपरेट ट्रांसफर के मोड पर दीनदयाल उपाध्याय पोर्ट पर कंटेनर टर्मिनल बने जो टूना टेकरा में है और साथ ही साथ मल्टीपर्पज कार्गो का भी वहां पर डेवलपमेंट हो ये दो निर्णय वहां पर लिए गए The Union Cabinet has cleared amendments to the Multi-State Cooperative Societies Act to bring transparency and accountability in the sector. The amendments also seek to reform the electoral process. The Union Cabinet has approved the Multi-State Cooperative Societies Amendment Bill 2022, which seeks to amend the Multi-State Cooperative Societies Act 2002. The amendments seek to improve ease of doing business, bringing greater transparency and enhanced governance. The bill will also widen the composition of board and ensure financial discipline besides enabling the multi-state cooperative societies to raise funds. The ombudsman will also provide for a mechanism for redressal of grievances in a structured fashion. And now news from the world of business and economy. Union INB Minister Anurag Singh Thakur said the Union Cabinet has approved a one-time grant of rupees 22,000 crore to Indian Oil Corporation, Bharat Petroleum Corporation Limited, and Hindustan Petroleum Corporation Limited to offset losses incurred by selling LPG at subsidised cost. All these firms sell domestic LPG at government-regulated prices to consumers. In a boost to railway employees, the Union Cabinet approved productivity-linked bonus equivalent to 78 days of wages for 2021-22. The move will directly benefit over 11 lakh non-gazetted railway employees. The Railway Ministry said its employees have improved performance of passenger goods and services that has energized the economy. The RBI will have to submit a report to the centre. Detailing reasons for the failure to contain prices and remedial steps to rein the price rise. The Reserve Bank of India Act mandates that in case of inflation target not being met for three quarters in a row, the central bank has to submit a report to the government. This will be the first time it will have to do so after the onset of the monetary policy framework in 2016. Indian markets recovered after yesterday's steep fall. With both NSE and BSE indices making sharp profits, benchmark BSE Sensex gained 478 points to settle above the 57,000 mark, while the NSE Nifty jumped 140 points to touch 17,100 points. Among top performers, Axis Bank jumped 3%, while NTPC gained 2%. In a mixed day for global markets, Asian stocks including Hang Seng and Taiwan dropped by 1%, while European markets strengthened by 1%. Nasdaq, however, trailed by 1%. In more news, Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman has said that the next budget will be very carefully structured to help the economy sustain growth momentum and rein in prices. The finance minister was responding to a question on the next year's budget in a chat with eminent economist Ishwar Prasad at Brookings Institute in Washington DC. Nirmala Sitaraman is in Washington DC to attend the annual meetings of the International Monetary Fund and World Bank. Momentum that Indian economy has got coming out of the pandemic and the momentum with which it will grow even the next year even as per the many, very many multilateral institutions which are observing india cannot be weakened so it will have to again be a very carefully structured budget in which the growth momentum will have to be sustained external affairs minister s j shankar said he raised the issue of visa backlog of students with the australian authorities he said that he was assured that the problem would be resolved by the end of the year Jashanka said this on Tuesday during an address to the Indian community there. He is on a two-day visit to Australia. The issue pertains particularly to students seeking to return to educational institutions in Australia following the COVID pandemic.
Now moving on. The flood situation in Assam remains serious as incessant rain slashed several districts affecting nearly 40,000 people. Four districts comprising nearly 50 villages have been badly affected by floods due to heavy rains in the last 24 hours. Many affected people have taken shelter in relief camps and distribution centres of the affected districts. While Dehmaji, Lakhimpur and uh, Dibrugarh districts have been affected by the rain, Flash floods in Jatinga River affected some areas in Dima Hasao. The district administrators and state disaster response force are evacuating the people from the affected areas. Brahmaputra River is also flowing above the danger mark at the Neemti Ghat in Jorhat. The weather department said the light to moderate rainfall is likely at many places in state from Thursday to Saturday. In Uttar Pradesh, 1,370 villages in 18 districts are affected by floods triggered by heavy rainfall in the last couple of days. Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister Yogi Adityana chaired a high-level meeting today to discuss the flood situation in the state. He directed his ministers and officials to expedite the relief and rehabilitation work in the district affected. The Chief Minister also conducted an aerial survey of Balrampur, Shastri and Behraich districts to take stock of the situation. He also distributed relief material and interacted with people. President Draupadi Murmu is on a two-day visit to Tripura, where she is participating in several events. President Murmu inaugurated various development projects in Agartala today. Addressing the event, she said, that holistic education system is very important for national development and development of youth. Tripura Sohit, Purbor or Chetrome, Bikaski or Sim Sombabanai. Aj, Yendro Raja Sorkarum de Sohoyoxi, Highway, Railway, Yarue, Tota Water Railke, K. Nay Projesse, Ehaki Progotico, Ek, Nay Goti, Mildrehi. The President also inaugurated the Tripura State Judicial Academy and laid the foundation stone for Tripura National Law University at Nasinghar Agartala. President Draupadi Murmu also interacted with the women workers of Durgabari T Estate. President Murmu also visited the Albert Eka War Memorial in Agartala. She paid tribute to the brave soldiers who made the supreme sacrifice during the Bangladesh Liberation War of 1971. This is her first visit to the Northeast as the President. On her arrival in Agartala, she was received at the airport by Governor Satyadev Narayan and Chief Minister Manik Saha. She was also accorded an All-Women Guard of Honour by the Tripura Police. Any expansion, particularly of geographical boundaries, involves violation of human rights, Vice President Jagdeep Dhanka said today. Addressing the Foundation Day event of the National Human Rights Commission in Delhi, the Vice President asserted that India as a nation never believed in expansion. He reiterated that Indian ethos ensures the nation's concern is not limited to itself but for the world. The Vice President also emphasised that human rights cannot be reckoned only in narrow sense of preservation of personal liberties and dignity, but have to be understood in a broader context. It is a befitting recognition of NSRC, dedicated efforts and high standards that NSRC India has retained its A status of accreditation with Global Alliance of National Human Rights Institutions for the fourth consecutive year. I have no doubt this track record would ever be on incremental trajectory. This indicates our nation's Excellent recent record as regards human rights. Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla is on a visit to Surat. He inaugurated the College of Legal Studies and Innovation and Incubation Center of Entrepreneurship at the Bhagwan Mahavir University. Addressing the students, Speaker Om Birla said that due to the youth, democracy and demography are the biggest strengths of India. He urged the youth to play an active role in politics and democracy and give suggestions in making policies and laws. If the people of the 
जवाबदेही बनाना है तो मेरे भारत के नौजवानों को उसमें सक्रिय भागीदारी निभानी पड़ेगी उनको सुशासन लाने के लिए अच्छा शासन लाने के लिए एक जवाबदेही एक भारत के नौजवान जवाबदेही से काम करने की जवाबदेही से भागीदारी बने और एक अच्छा शासन पारदर्शिता शासन लाए जो जनता की जवाबदेही से काम कर सके नाउ लेट्स टेक अ लुक एट स्टोरीज दैट आर मेकिंग न्यूज अक्रॉस द नेशन A MiG-29 K aircraft of the Navy crashed during a routine sortie off the Goa coast today after developing a technical malfunction. The pilot ejected safely and was rescued in a swift search and rescue operation, the Navy said in a statement. A board of inquiry has been ordered to investigate the cause of the crash. It was the fourth accident involving the MiG-29 K since 2019. The aircraft crashed while it was returning to the base. IMF has projected a dim view on global growth rate but has praised Indian economy for doing very well top IMF officials say India's growth story remains up on top among advanced and developing economies when everyone is slowing down in terms of economic growth India has not remained unimpacted but is doing better and is in a relatively bright spot compared to other countries the IMF said More than 15 crore activities were conducted under the various themes across the country during the 5th Rashtra Poshan Maha from 1st to 30th September this year contributing in the Prime Minister's vision for a suposhit Bharat this year the gram panchayats were triggered to be the focal points of all activities during Poshan Maha this helped mobilize various committees at the ground India's debt is projected to be at 84% of its GDP by the end of 2022 which is higher than many emerging economies but its debt is a bit easier to sustain a senior IMF official has said the official stressed that it is important for India to now have a very clear medium term objective on the fiscal India's retail inflation rose to a 5 month high of 7.41% In September on higher food and energy cost food inflation which accounts for nearly half the CPI basket soared 8.60% in September this year as again 7.62 in August for the ninth month in a row retail inflation has remained above the Reserve Bank of India's tolerance level of 6% Now time for a short break stay tuned for more news on the other side Welcome back to the news now time for all the updates from Russia Ukraine war front The recently restored power line supplying the Russian occupied Zaporizhia nuclear power plant has been cut again The power cut has forced the plant to switch to emergency diesel generators for the second time in 5 days IAEA chief Rafael Grossi said today He reiterated the need for a demilitarized zone around the plant to prevent shelling near the facility. Meanwhile, the Russian installed leader of the region said a safety zone around the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant is not possible until the front moves forward by at least 100 kilometers. Russian President Vladimir Putin met with the head of the International Atomic Energy Agency, Rafael Grossi, in St. Petersburg on Tuesday. Welcoming the chief Putin said that he was open for the dialogue. Grossi said he looked forward to discussing issues of nuclear safety including the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. Ukrainian forces recaptured five settlements in the southern Kherson region according to the Southern Operational Command. The villages in the Burislav district were retaken as of 11th October. All these settlements are in one of the four regions recently annexed by Russia. Russia's latest attacks on Monday damaged three thermal power plants in Kyiv, leading to power cuts all over the city. The government had to urge citizens to cut electrical load from 5 p.m. to 10 p.m. to deal with the crisis. This place is almost repaired, though missile strikes have damaged water pipes and drainage. The people have also been advised to have minimum food supply and important documents on their hands and follow the air raid alarm rules. 
Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky said G7 leaders have promised Ukraine its attackers will be brought to justice. He also spoke about new sanctions, new forms of political pressure and new forms of support for Ukraine from the G7 nation. The leaders of the group of seven industrial powers have condemned the bombardment and also said they would stand firmly with Ukraine for as long as it takes. Zelensky has also urged UNESCO to expel Russia for damaging hundreds of cultural sites in Ukraine. And now news from other parts of the globe. The British pound fell sharply against the dollar after Bank of England Governor Andrew Bailey warned that it would not extend its emergency intervention in financial markets beyond this week. The currency lost more than a cent against the dollar after Bank's governor insisted that the £65 billion scheme to purchase UK government bonds will not be continued beyond the deadline on Friday. More details follow. The pound sank against the dollar early on Wednesday after the Bank of England governor confirmed that it will not extend an emergency debt buying plan introduced last month to stabilise financial markets. The pound fell by almost 1% to just below 1.10 US dollars before rallying slightly. After the government's September mini budget, the currency hit a record low of 1.03 US dollars. The central bank stepped in after the British government on 23rd of September announced plans for 50 billion US dollars in tax cuts without saying how it would pay for them. The announcement spooked financial markets and sent the pound plunging to a record low against the dollar. The Bank of England intervened to prop up the bond market and stop a wider economic crisis that particularly threatened pension funds. The market turmoil has caused pain for many Britons, especially prospective home buyers, who have seen mortgage rates soar on the increased prospect of a big rate hike from the central bank when it meets next month. In more bad financial news, the Office for National Statistics said on Wednesday that Britain's economy contracted by 0.3% in the quarter in August with manufacturing and consumer services both recording falls. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. Japan's space agency said a rocket carrying eight satellites failed just after liftoff on Wednesday. The rocket had to be aborted by Self-Destruction Command in the country's first failed rocket launch in nearly 20 years. Take a look. The Japanese space agency said its rocket malfunctioned just after its liftoff on Wednesday, a first failure for the country's rocket launch in nearly 20 years. The Japan Aerospace Exploration Agency said its Epsilon-6 rocket experienced an unidentified abnormality and its flight had to be aborted by a self-destruction command less than seven minutes after takeoff. Officials said the agency sent a self-destruction signal after deciding that the rocket was not able to fly safely and enter a planned orbit. The agency said the cause of the failure was still being investigated. The Epsilon rocket was carrying eight payloads, including two developed by a private company. Wednesday's failure ended success records for Epsilon series since its first launch of its original version in 2013. Bureau Report, Sunset TV. And now time for all the latest news from the world of sports. The 36th National Games concluded in Gujarat on Wednesday. Vice President Jagdeep Dhankar and Lok Sabha Speaker Om Birla were present at the closing ceremony in Gujarat. The Services Sports Control Board topped the medals tally. Maharashtra was second place while Haryana took third place. मैं दावे के साथ कह सकता हूं सब कुछ मुमकिन है सब कुछ संभव है जिस चीज को हम सपने में नहीं सोचते वो जमीन पर उतरी हुई देखी है मैंने आजादी के पहले आजादी के बाद और आज के दिन इस मिट्टी के लालू ने that's all in news for the day. Keep watching Sunset Television for more updates. Good night.